Hi, this is Alan. I'm going to show you how I change the gearing ratio on my Zero S 2011 motorcycle. I'm going to show you it here. The red jet, the big red jack you see underneath it there, this is what lifted the entire motorcycle up off the ground, and it balances well on that. But I was afraid that when I remove the back wheel and the swing arm, now all the weight will be in the front of the motorcycle, and the whole thing might teeter forward and fall. So there's a strap wrapped around the handlebars going up to the rafters and that's just supporting the weight while the back wheel is off. There's a second floor jack that is used because once you take off the, um, the shock absorber from the back swing arm, then that back wheel flops around. So you need the second jack to put under the wheel and you can raise it or lower it to be exactly where you need it so you can access all the bolts that are holding everything together. Pretty much have to take off everything on the back half of the motorcycle to get to the motor. Once the motor is out, here it is, here's the motor that came out of it. Then you need to remove the pulley. Now there is a bolt going through the middle of the shaft holding the, the pulley onto the motor. I heated that up with a blowtorch to, uh, to break up any Loctite that may be holding it. And then the problem is while you're turning the bolt to, un, to unscrew it, how do you hold this pulley still without spinning the whole motor around? Well, there's a perfect tool that Zero has provided and that's the belt itself. I just wrapped the belt around the pulley, which of course it's a perfect fit. And now there's plenty of leverage. I was able to hold it with one hand here, hold it still, while the other hand undid the bolt from the middle. Once that center bolt is out, then you need to remove, of course it slides on and off now, but originally it was hard to remove this to slide it out. Oh, and there is a, a little set screw right there. Don't forget to loosen up the set screw. But to remove the pulley from the motor, I have a puller tool here and these three little prongs went around the pulley in various places and then the center bolt um, just unscrewed the whole thing, pulling it out. You don't want to pry this out with a screwdriver or you'll risk bending or warping either the housing or the pulley itself. If you're going to throw the pulley away, I guess you don't care if it breaks, but I, I don't want to do that. If I didn't have one of these tools already, I would have gone to O'Reilly's and just borrowed one of their steering wheel pullers or some type of puller they got for free, then you return it. So there's the, there's the old 28 tooth pulley and it's even stamped on there 28T. Once this is removed, and by the way, there was a little, uh, a little keyway that comes with it and it slides into this slot here and then the uh, accompanying notch on the pulley, they all line up. Otherwise the shaft would spin and spin without grabbing the pulley when you're trying to go this is important, I'll talk about it more later. So the next step was where do you find a, um, a 25 tooth pulley? And I got one here, you see this one stamped 25 T. The, uh, the silver ring in the middle, I added that. That didn't originally come with this. And the problem is this shaft on the motor is 3 fourths of an inch diameter. And the old pulley has a hole that is 3 fourths of an inch, so everything fits perfectly. But the new pulley, has an inner hole that is one inch because the newer motors apparently have a one inch shaft. So I put this sleeve, this metal sleeve in there, which has an inner diameter of three four seven inch and an outer diameter of one inch. So it, it tightens everything up snug. Uh, this pulley, by the way, um, the, the way I found it, I tried emailing Zero to ask them, where can I get another pulley? That was about three weeks ago. They still haven't responded. They're not much help. So to get this one, I, I called up a, um, a motorcycle shop in Austin, Texas, uh, asked for their parts department, talked to the person there, and it took him about a week, but he was able, he called me back and he was able to locate a pulley that is made for this belt. And that is, both these two pulleys are an eight millimeter pitch. That's the distance from one rib to the next. And both of them have a, a width of 15 millimeters so they can, they can accommodate a 14 millimeter wide belt, which is what I've got. So that, all that part's the same. The only problem was the inner diameter. So going back to the sleeve that I put it in, here's one here. I was able to find these sleeves and that's what they're made for. The outer diameter of this is one inch. The inner diameter is three four seven inch. And they come with a, a notch cut in them so you can slide a keyway in there. I went to a place called Granger to get these. I think you can order them online, but there's a Granger shop in town where I went, and it, 
they order these for me. Unfortunately, they come in a pack of three. I said, I don't need three. Can I just buy one from you? And you can sell the other two to other customers. They said, no, you have to buy the whole pack. So now I've got two extra of these sitting around. But anyway, one problem with this, if you look very closely, you'll see the gap between, this, uh, between the two sides of this slot. It's a quarter inch up at the top. However, down at the bottom, the inner diameter, the corners poke in a little bit where the metal got bent and that's less than a quarter inch. And here's a, um, here's a graphic drawing of it. This is highly exaggerated, but you'll see what I had to do. To get the two corners out of the way, I had to file down the gap in the middle until the, the two sides are parallel. Okay, going back to this motor then, I've got, the, I've got the sleeve, I've got the pulley, and now I need a keyway. And going back to the original keyway, this one's roughly square, a fourth of an inch by a fourth of an inch. It sits an eighth of an inch into the shaft, an eighth of an inch into the pulley. But what about that extra eighth of an inch that's the thickness of this silver ring? So in all, you need a rectangular keyway. You need one that's a quarter inch wide by three eighths of an inch now high. So it can go all the way through all three components, shaft, sleeve, and pulley. Uh, went running around all over town looking. I can't find one anywhere. So I ended up making one. Here's the keyway I made, and the way I did this, I went to Lowe's hardware store, and I bought this piece of steel that they sell. It's a, a fourth of an inch by an inch wide by three whole feet long, and I didn't need three feet at all for this, and I told the lady there, I said, if you've got a little scrap of this, I'll buy it from you, but they didn't, so I had to buy this three foot piece so I could cut off a little three eighths of an inch long piece to make a keyway. All the keyways they had at the hardware stores I went, they're all square shaped. None of them are rectangular. The way I cut this off, I measured out 3 8 7 inch, scored a line on the metal, and then with a hacksaw and a vise, just very slowly cut down, following that line as best I could. And you want to take it slow, because if you go too quickly, it's easy for the blade to start going at an angle one way or another, and then this won't be parallel anymore. So once that's cut off, then the next step is making it fit in the slot. And it's not as easy as it sounds because if you look at a cross section of this piece of metal, that, I don't know if you'll even notice it or not, but it's not exactly parallel. The top side and the bottom side bow upwards a little bit. And I didn't realize it because it's so slight, but here's an exaggerated view of it on the computer. But you'll see the problem with that bow, the entire piece is more than a quarter of an inch thick. So I had to do a lot of filing to get the two sides down smooth and parallel. But once that's done, then the, then the final thickness is a little bit less than a quarter of an inch, but that's fine. It slides into the slot on the shaft, and it also slides into the, uh, the slots on the pulley. Oh, by the way, I don't want to take this one out to show you this metal sleeve, although it's a tight fit. You have to pound it in with a, a hammer and wood. Getting it to go into the pulley is not hard but getting it to go in while keeping that one little slot lined up exactly, that's the hard part. So the way to do it is put in the keyway first and then tap the sleeve in to the pulley. And then you can take the keyway back out like I have now and the sleeve stays there all lined up like it should be. One final thing I've done here is, well, you probably can't see it, but I put some grease, any kind of grease will do. This is Molly grease, motor oil probably work, Vaseline, just something so that on the outside of the shaft and the inside of, of the pulley sleeve and around my, uh, my new keyway because I want everything to fit but I don't want it getting seized up in case I ever got to remove this in the future for any reason. I don't want to have to go through the trouble of trying to yank that, that pulley off. Oh, also let me bring this up. The new pulley did not come with a set screw. See, there's the little screw hole. You need that set screw and it is not the same size hole as the one that was on the old original pulley. So I had to go buy a new set screw. It wasn't too hard to find. The problem was finding what size is that. It was a lot of trial and error at the store, but here's what I ended up getting, and, and it does fit. And they come in a pack of two, which I don't need two of them. However, I don't mind having two, because if you drop one of these little tiny black set screws and it rolls on a dark garage floor, you're not going to find it. And finally, the last thing I'm going to do, I haven't done it yet, but once I get everything on there. That's hard to do with one hand. Once I get it all together, I don't like the original bolt that they had holding this on because it uses hex keys and I don't have that many. 
So I, while I was at Home Depot anyway, I went ahead and bought a bolt and washer that will fit in through the slot, yet I can use a socket on the end of it. So I'm able to tighten it, and if I ever got to take this off again, remove it a lot easier than trying to twist with my twist with my fingers on a, um, a hex, an Allen wrench. So that'll hold that on together.